closer. I'll do it one more time. Ah, ah. Diamond. Down. Okay. So if you can see. Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna be doing um, a video that's not about obedience, but it's about respect. And it's about um, a dog respecting you when you do things with them. And uh, we're gonna use a Rottweiler today. We're gonna use Diamond. Um, so this is going to be a video about spatial pressure. Spatial pressure is basically when you uh, condense space with a dog that forces their behavior to change, good or bad. Um, spatial pressure, a lot of people use it. They don't know they use it. And it's basically when your dog is basically, I'm going to say, over across there and they got something in their mouth and then when you start walking towards them they know they're not supposed to have it so you say something to them and the minute you start moving towards them you close in pressure they drop it out their mouth all right so we're going to use diamond as a uh, example because rottweilers are very um they do a lot of resource garden and food aggressive right it's a trait of theirs so we're going to use diamond as an example the best way to do spatial pressure is to try to lock a dog into a corner or space right now if your dog is respectful to you you can do this if your dog is not respectful to you I don't recommend you doing this at all because once you close in spatial pressure on a dog they're gonna react and it's fight or flight they're gonna bite you so we'll, we'll do this real quick so diamond has the toy diamond And as I closed in pressure on her, she went down. I'll do it again. Diamond up. So every time that I close in the pressure on her, she does one of her obedience commands, right? So we're going to have her walking right here. And I'm going to, while she's over there, I'm going to start closing the pressure on her. You notice like as soon as I got close to her, she went down. She released the ball and she went down. That's spatial pressure, okay? That is what we're doing with spatial pressure. Now we're gonna do another one, but we're gonna do it with food. And we're gonna do it inside the building because outside there's a lot of area, there's a lot of ground to cover, there's a lot of distance. We need a closed in space when we're doing this with something like a treat or food, and I could kind of show you better what it looks like from inside. Alright, so let's do that real quick. Alright, so we got food this time. Diamond, no. Sit. So we're going to do the same technique with her. And again, a lot of people can't do this. I recommend that you be careful if your dog is food aggressive. Uh, this is called respect. So you'll see how much Diamond respects me because I'll be able to mess with her food when I do it. Okay? Sit. Wait. Okay. So as she's eating, I'm going to close in a distance on her. And I'm going to do it really slow. I'm not going to just run up on her. But you'll watch. She's looking at me. Ah, ah. Diamond. 
Sit. No. Leave it. Ah. Uh, no. Plots. Wait. Down. That spatial pressure. Okay. That spatial pressure closing in distance with the dog. And you see her reaction as I come closer. I'll do it one more time. Ah, ah. Dive in. Down. Okay, so if you can see, when I close in the gap, her, her demeanor changes, her body language changes, because dog in dog world, um, they do this to each other. They close in space, space is important, all right? All right, so that's spatial pressure. Spatial pressure is basically condensing the space for the dog. The minute you start moving towards the dog's space, they're gonna change what they're doing. It's the same way when if you're calling the dog to come to you and they won't come to you, you step left. They see that movement, they're going to come to you. So in a dog world, uh, space is important to dogs. So if another dog is in another dog's space, they're going to fight. If another dog is trying to take another dog's toy and they are towering over them, that is showing a side of dominance. It shows the dog that you mean business and the dog is going to stop. And you all seen this before. You guys seen this at home. If your dog has something in their mouth and you start walking towards them, they spit it out and run away. You're walking into their space. Um, so they know that you're about to get, you know, you're about to stand over them or whatnot. So spatial pressure is very important when it comes to respect. If you add spatial pressure to your dog and they do not respect you, you're going to get bit, period. Because you're entering their space and that is a dominant st stance as far as a person or another dog. So I don't recommend you trying this if you know your dog does not respect you. Um, but if you know your dog respects you and the next time you tell them to get out of the living room and they won't, the minute you start walking towards them, they're going to get up and move. Same thing if the dog is laying there and you step over the dog. That's showing a lack of respect because the dog won't move out of your way. The dog should get up, move out of your way so you can walk through. So spatial pressure is very important when you start talking about respect. This is not something that a dog trainer can really train your dog. This is something that you have to do when you're inside with your dog in your house. You have to create that you're more dominant and when you want your space, you need it. Last thing further, that spatial pressure, uh, dogs do it to humans. For instance, if you're laying on a couch and your dog comes up to you and forces you to pet them, they're invading your space. So they're, they're telling you that you're going to pet me when I want you to pet me, not when you want to pet me. So they do it to you as well. Dogs use spatial pressure and protection work. Um, when we're, we're closing a distance to get a bite, if the dog is extremely aggressive, the dog is going to fight. If the dog is not, the dog is going to flight. So we, we, we close that distance really slow. We make sure when we're doing spatial pressure that we're not putting too much pressure on the dog. Spatial pressure is a lot of different ways that is used. People use it every day and they don't have an idea that they do it. But that is spatial pressure. Um, I hope that kind of helped you guys out a lot, of, a little bit. But when we talk about that kind of thing, um, and in the future, if you get if you get a dog and you need you're trying to acquire space, because in resource guarding, this is where spatial pressure is important. Because when dogs are guarding a space, an item, or a place, they're doing spatial pressure on you. Spatial pressure on you. They do not want you in their crate. They don't want you on the couch. They don't want you in their doorway. They don't want you in their house. So they do the opposite. They do that trish to us and we back down and we back away because they're being aggressive. So 
it's, it's an art of dominating this is more respect and obedience it's something that you learn with your dogs very young diamond learned it with me when she was 12 weeks before that she had no respect for me and she would challenge me so you have to figure out a way to guide through that um so uh again if you have big dominant breeds you need to have them respect you if they don't respect you they're not gonna respect your kids your friends or anybody else diamond come here come here big mama you can't go up there screws come on good girl all right so that's madison bell you guys have a good one